it. No sign whatsoever of any avalanche danger. So I think those guys were really just trying to keep me away from here. Hey there, this is Creation Images where I share my in the field landscape photography, the skills I've learned over 20 years of hiking and backpacking in the wilderness, as well as the insights and the inspirations that I've received along the way. If you're new here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button, ring the bell below so that you can receive notification every time I come up with a new adventure. Anyway, I hope this video is helpful to you and I really appreciate you being here. So thanks for watching. This is the town of Marble, Colorado, population 134. For such a small town, it has two claims to fame. The first is the world-class marble that has been quarried here since the 1800s. Ever hear of the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, or Arlington National Cemetery? That's right, all of them used marble from this tiny town. The second reason marble is famous is for an old mine structure that teeters on the side of a small waterfall. It is the Crystal Mill, and it is the reason why I am here. Here I am at the base of the Crystal River Road that leads up to the town of Crystal and the Crystal Mill. I've been up there for the last three days and I've had my adventures and got my photos and I want to give a quick disclaimer before you start watching this video that uh, my conjectures and my ideas and the things that I say during the course of the video are based off of my interactions that I had at the very beginning of this trip. Uh, afterwards, when I came, just came down, um, I met two lovely ladies from the town of Marble, Colorado here, and they set me straight on a few facts um, and kind of shed some light on the, the truth of the whole situation. So if you want to know about uh, the, the exact specific details about what's, what's going on, um, stick around to the end of the video and I will share exactly, um, well, as well as anybody can tell exactly what's going on. Thanks. Let me show you where I'm hiding. I've got my tent set up right here on this kind of knoll area that's sitting up on top of a four wheel drive road that comes through here. Now this road is normally closed in the winter time and then it follows the Crystal River about three miles up that direction to the town of the ghost town of Crystal, Colorado. Now Crystal, Colorado's claim to fame is a landmark called the Crystal Mill. But recently, there's been uh, some landowners who have been charging people to take photos. So if you go up with your phone, it costs $10 to snap a shot from the road. If you go down closer to the, uh, the mill and get close to the waterfall there, they can charge all the way up to $200. So my hope was to come up in the winter time and get my photos without dealing with the crowds and dealing with all of that hassle. But when I got to the town of Marble, Colorado, where this four wheel drive road starts, things became a little bit mysterious and a little bit scary. Let me tell you about it. So when I drove through the snow-encrusted town of Marble this morning, I got to the end of the road where normally it turns into a four-wheel drive road and it closes in the winter. There was a snowcat there with two men filling it up with fuel. Uh, there were clear tracks going up the, the dirt road, what's normally a dirt road, and I, I pulled over trying to find a place to, to park and I asked them what was going on and they said, oh, you know, we're, we're working up there, we're going up to Crystal. And I, they were pretty closed mouth, but when I mentioned that I was eager to go up there myself and I was going to be hiking, they got really firm in their displeasure with me going up that direction. They were saying, oh no, no, you can't do that. The avalanche danger is really high. I guarantee you there's going to be slides today because it's going to be so warm and uh, it, it, they'll, it, I mean, they'll kill you. Those those avalanches are, are, are really bad along that stretch of road. You, I mean, it's very possible that you'll die today if you go that direction. And I was very confused because they were going up in a snow cat and yet me just hiking along the road was going to trigger trigger avalanches. So I wasn't too sure about that, but I stayed quiet and kind of just stayed to the side for a while. And they, they finally moved off driving their snowcat up the road. And so I, I had to think real carefully about what I was going to do, what my plan is going to be. I'm going to stay here uh, today and I'm going to rest up. 
but tonight around midnight, one o'clock, I'm not really sure yet, I'm going to go ahead and hike up the three miles up that nice, easy groomed road now um, under the moonlight. I'm gonna take photos of Crystal Mill draped in this beautiful snowy landscape with the moonlight coming through there. And there's two bonuses to this plan, or there's two really good things about this. First of all, if there is avalanche danger, which I don't doubt that that's possible, in the middle of the night, everything's gonna be frozen up and it'll be much safer. Secondly, and possibly more importantly, I won't have to deal with those two guys who, again, were pretty firm saying, if you go up that road today, you might get hurt. Not sure I wanna deal with that at all. So I'm gonna hang out here for a while, enjoy the beautiful sunshine, it is an absolutely stunning day, and then I will head up tonight. This is gonna be a real adventure. It's about one o'clock in the morning here and I've just uh, gotten up out of my tent and I'm gonna be heading up that three miles to Crystal Mill this morning. I heard the, uh, the uh, snow cat come through about 5.30 last night, so I know they're not staying up there. Um, I should have the place to myself and uh, we'll see what happens when I get up there. These guys have a whole operation going on up here according to those uh, homeowners. They said they've got about six snowmobiles up here as well as that snowcat. Um, when they were loading the snowcat yesterday, it looked like they were putting in uh, quickcrete or concrete um, bags in the back of their snowcat. So I don't know what they're doing up here. So I've been hiking now for about an hour and a half and no sign whatsoever of any avalanche danger. So I think those guys were really just trying to keep me away from here. But uh, in the moonlight, I know you can't tell with the GoPro, but in the moonlight, I'm just barely able to see the Crystal Mill now. And I'm super excited to get there and start taking some, uh, some photos. So this is the first composition I have of Crystal Mill. Oh, let me pull that back up here so you can see it. All right, let's try this again. This is the first composition I have of Crystal Mill. And this is kind of the standard composition that most people get when they just drive up here and pay their $10 to shoot from the road. But uh, let me show you the settings we have here. Um, I'm shooting at uh, ISO 1600 and uh, f5.6 uh, at 30 seconds now the uh, the moon is out it's pretty bright so let me go ahead and take that shot and then uh, we will see what uh, what it looks like on the histogram and see if it's focused uh, 5.6 isn't a huge um, or a, a, you know a, a really sharp aperture uh, but I'm shooting let's see I'm shooting at uh, f20 or 28 millimeters so 5.6 I should still have pretty good depth of field on this so let's take that shot and then see what it looks like so let's go ahead and look at how that turned out um, yeah looking at the histogram here you can see I've got the the blue green and red channels are all um, within a, a good range there neither one none of them are blown out to the whites none of them are completely black um, if we just look at the composition there, um, yeah, that looks that looks really good. And then uh, what I always do and what is a good idea to just get in the habit of is checking that focus. So I'm going to go to the very bottom of the composition, see if it's focused there. It looks really good. That's the closest thing in the in the composition. And then I'm going to scroll up if I can and look even the stars up in here are sharp and focused.
All right, so here we're back and uh, um, it's about 4.30 right now. So I still have, oh boy, I still have close to two hours before sunrise light's gonna come around. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and head over to uh, the town of Crystal in the dark and see what that's like. Um, but uh, in the interim, I'm going to boil up some water. I've got uh, some snow melting here. All my water froze while I was up here, so I have no drinking water. Um, I pulled up my little Coglin's thermometer and uh, it says it's about, well down on the ground when I just picked it up, it was, it was about zero degrees. So it's probably between zero and five degrees right now. Um, it's been really cold this morning, uh, but uh, overall it hasn't been too bad and uh, I'm gonna get some water melted and get a nice hot drink and then head over there to the town of Crystal. Uh, it's about a quarter mile away from here and uh, just see what there is to see over there. Here's another snow cat. I don't know if it's the same one. Maybe I misheard last night, um, but uh, the snow cat is up here in the town of Crystal. And uh, right now I'm, I'm wandering around. There was a light on it, like a little outbuilding down below, but uh, the moon is set. So everything is really dark right now. I wish I could show you on the GoPro, but there's really nothing to show you right now. It is incredible what modern cameras can capture in low light. A little creative use of my headlamp didn't hurt either. It was so dark in the valley when I took this shot, I couldn't even see the cabins without my headlamp, but my camera could. It was time to head back to my camp. I wasn't too eager to run into those guys on the snowcat while hiking the three miles back to my tent, so I really needed to get moving along. But there is always time for one more photo. If you've been following me for a while, you probably know that I'm not really too big on capturing that scene that everybody else gets. You know, that photograph that's always on Instagram or Google or whatever. I'm, I'm always about trying to find my own composition. So you might be wondering why I was so set to get Crystal Mill this morning. Um, my, my folks moved to Colorado back in the 60s and in the mid 70s, my uh, dad took our family up here and he has a black and white photo of Crystal Mill that he took back in sometime in the mid 70s. And I've always looked at that picture and thought it was super cool. This is the shot that my dad took in 1975. I was three years old. Recently, we worked together to find the negatives and to scan them into the computer. Now, I, I saw one recently and I'm like, that is one that I'm gonna have to capture, one of those iconic places that I'm gonna capture before it's too late. And as you can tell from my experience up here, it's just getting busier and busier. Things have changed dramatically over the last 45 years and uh, places that were just open for people to go and, and enjoy and explore have now become protected or or commandeered by other people, by private parties. Um, when I was up there, I saw a lot of national forest signs um, stating, you're talking about how they're in partnership with private enterprises to protect that area and to restore it and keep it there for 100, another 100 years. So it, it makes sense to have people protecting these places before they get loved to death. So I promised at the end of this video, I would explain the truth of the situation. And this is what I understand. There's a local family that has owned land up there in Crystal City for generations, clear back into the 1800s. And it's their goal to develop it 
build kind of a ski in, ski out, uh, hut to hut system up there, or at least a little village of, of uh, cabins up there in Crystal City. Hopefully that will turn out well and people will be able to come to this location in uh, Colorado and be able to experience um, the history of it and just the beauty of nature here in Colorado. And uh, during the winter time right now, I think they're just hauling um, equipment and hauling uh, uh, construction materials so that when springtime hits, they can start building in, er in earnest. Um, I'm not really sure what the whole cloak and dagger stuff was and the scare tactics was um, when I first got here in terms of telling me about this horrific avalanche danger and how I was going to get hurt or I could die going up there. Although everybody else that I've met um, from Marvel here have been super friendly and I'm just really glad I was able to experience it and I was able to get my photo of Crystal Mill anyway. So thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something from it and I hope to see you back. Thanks.